like I'm dreaming in motion. I'm feeling all around me. What what um it's just really just I just we're in a trance and we cannot see na, 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 na. like that and then it kind of switches modulates a little bit. We go uh, we go Okay, let's let's keep keep let's run it a couple of times. All let's right, let's keep running. And I don't think you know me. Uh, don't think you understand me. Uh, so I'ma get right down to it. The way I do it, the way I make you feel about me. Don't think you understand who I be. Don't think you understand that you're standing here with me. But that's okay, let's clear our minds. For quite a time, think you came for my love. You come for love. You come just to show me all your love. So we can experience love You came for my love You come for love You come just to show me all your love So we can <laughs> Okay, let's uh Let's see What you wanna do? Let's, can, can we work on the chorus? Yeah, cause I don't remember it either Yeah, so just uh Come for love um, Come for Love is, is the first track on the EP. Um, it is, it really originated from a conversation I had with uh, a major graphics designer in Columbus by the name of Corey Faber. Uh, he, we, we went to lunch one day and we talked about my first set over at this shop called Kiflo. Um, and it was actually my first set, it was actually my second individual set, but um, it was a major set and um, a lot of people had come and we didn't expect that because I didn't have uh, a name or a sound out yet. And, um, and so I remember I just said to him, you know, it, I feel like people just came for love. You know, a lot of people came because they knew me or they came because they knew somebody who knew me. Um, but it wasn't necessarily because of the art that I was producing. And so um, he said, you should make, come, make, make a song on that. Come for love, title the EP, come for love, or whatever. And so we laughed about it for a minute. And then after, when I got home, I actually thought about it. And the melody just kind of came to me. Um, and, and that's where come, come for love actually comes from. It is meaning um, initially that you, when you first experienced me in this very um, pupil stage, I guess, um, if that's even the correct term, um, you're really coming just because there's some kind of relationship, whether it's a, a direct relationship or you know indirect. Um, but you're not coming because oh that is. Tijuana, you're coming because you want to experience Tijuana and, and see whether or not you want to uh, fall in love with that sound and, and be with that sound. So that's where Come For Love really came from. That's, that's what Come For Love is about. So, really simple. Just show me all your love. Touch on my bed and my body And she wrap all the hands all around me Baby girl, fill it up Baby girl, fill it up now Intrinsically touching, I love it when she touch on my bed and my body, and she wrap both her hands all around me. Mm -hmm. Baby girl, fill it up. Baby girl, fill it up now. Intrinsically touching. Intrinsically touching, or IT, which is also known as beard and body. Um, it, when I first wrote this song, it was it was kind of a, a joke um, because it was really just talking about um, somebody touching on your beard or your body. Because at the time, I had a longer beard, um, but I still I keep the beard because I would look like a, a baby face, I guess. I don't know, weird probably. And um, and so it was really talking about literally that affectionate touch from a woman to a man and how she touches on his beard and on his body. And so um, I was just sitting on my sitting at home, and it just came to me literally, and it and it just kind of kept flowing and kept flowing, and um, it's it's. It, it was amazing because I was actually playing with chat um, uh, because 
at that set at Kiffler again, we hadn't really created any music or anything like that, so we made that song. So um, when we got to the to the set and we actually did that song out of the however many we did, it was probably the most accepted out of all the songs that we did. Um, and you know, turn it to well, how does your girl touch on your beard or your body for you to write that song? You know that type of thing. So on social media, um, I had did it again a couple other places and. I would get messages uh, asking for that specific song. So, uh, Beard and Body is kind of like a, um, like a hidden jewel or something, you know, because I just kind of thought it was just was. So, uh, it ended up being kind of one of our favorite pieces to do and to, to hear, actually. So, that's Beard and Body. My name is Ariel Pitts. I am here to support t in completing his EP project. Yes, I do uh, help him with his website and making sure that he establishes a web presence um, in a medium that he owns. I think he's extremely talented. Um, knowing him personally, I know that the lyrics are inspired by um, his, his own personal feelings and his dreams, and to see that coming into fruition is just inspiring, so it's an inspiring project. So I seen you in my dreams last night Before I opened up my eyes Didn't want to start the day Just let me lay up in your presence, girl let me be inside your world Before I lose myself in humanity Soul Soul um, actually is about relationships in general and um, that one actually was inspired by my current relationship um, and you'll hear it in the lyrics and it's just about um, finally finding that individual that you really click with, um, and not click with, like not even on an intellectual level, but on that level where um, it's just like you 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 cannot imagine life without that individual. No matter how irritated you get, and I get irritated. Um, <laughs> no matter how frustrated you get with a situation or anything like that, you really um, you just you just you can't picture it without it. And so, um, so literally is that. Um, Having that, I guess people call it um, your soulmate. I don't, I don't, you know, you can take it that deep if you want to, um, but that's kind of what it is. Just kind of feeling somebody that deep, and I, and I don't necessarily believe that it necessarily has to be um, from you know husband to wife or boyfriend to girlfriend or whatever the case is or your relationship. Um, but it can be from um, a spiritual relationship. It can be um, even even a, a dear friendship. Um, when you have that connection, when you have that certain level of uh, compassion for each other, and you just can't imagine life without the other, I think that's what that's, that song really speaks to. And so um, it by far is one of my, to me, uh, most um, heartfelt songs that I've actually written uh, and recorded to date. Um, and it is by far one of my favorite songs to, to, to sing. It's the morning after It's the morning after Still and new, yeah It's the morning after It's the morning after 
It's the morning after, and I still have you. I'm walking in a slow day. So for morning after, morning after actually, um, when generally when I first started writing music, I didn't really know I could write, um, and so I just kind of wrote what what I felt, um, but never necessarily from a direct uh, situation. And so for morning after, it's actually my first piece that I wrote that was a direct connection to me. Um, something very, uh, very disheartening, very sad had happened to me literally the night before, and um, I just could not get over it. And so. Um, I figured I would try my hand at writing. You know, you always hear people who either write poetry or use a journal. They just, that's how they release their emotions and, and what have you. And I never had tried that. And so I wouldn't necessarily say that it released any emotion or, or made me feel better, um, but it captured the moment. And um, so when I, when I sing that song, sometimes it's hard to um, <clears throat> detach myself from that, from that moment in time, but it's also, um, very empowering because it, it, it lets me know that I've, I actually made it. It reminds me that I made it through that time. And so Morning After is a song that I actually do listen to quite often. Um, it's one of my favorites just to listen to. Um, and it, it's just that, it's it's the morning after, you know, you'll be all right, it, it, you know, you'll move on. Whether you're with somebody or not with somebody or, or you have what you wanted or you don't, um, it'll be the morning after. And if that's the case, then it, it, you'll be all right. <laughs> All right. You, uh, you ready? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Reality can be hard. Make your heart feel so hard. Sometimes gravity can bring you down to your knees But then there's something counter A counterculture hotter Can turn your sleeping dreams into your reality I'm gonna feel the stars in my pocket tonight I'm gonna wear the sun round my chain all right I'm gonna let the clouds be my beamer Says I have a beamer And walk into divided raging seas It's like I'm dreaming in motion I feel it all around me, yeah. I feel I'm in the sky now. Ah, ah, ah. Dreaming in motion. Um, I see it all around me. Yeah. Dreaming in motion. I see it in the sky now. It, it makes me smile. Um, because pretty much that's like what I'm doing right now. Uh, no matter how far I get um, in music, uh, just this moment in time, I, I always just marinate in it. Uh, just to have the ability to finalize or have some finality in in my vocals and my music ability from writing to, to arranging it. And whatever the case is, uh, it's literally dreaming in motion. And so dreaming in motion essentially is about anyone who has any ability, uh, artistic or intellectual or... Um, or um, like carpentry, you know, that's artistic too. So, so whatever gift that you may have that you kind of sit on or that we sit on um, in order to either, you know, make ends meet or because we don't feel like it'll be accepted or whatever the case is, um, it's really about kind of pushing out and dreaming in motion and, and not just daydreaming. You know, I always hear about daydream, but actually taking your dream, your passion, whatever it is, and putting it in action. And so um, the first line is reality can be hard and uh, make your heart feel so hard. Um, and that's, for me, that was when you, when you get so caught up in the mundane reality um, of trying to keep up with the Joneses and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, you, you, just, you get hard, you, you know, you don't really get to experience life anymore. And, um, and so you'll, you'll see that the song really just really it evolves from that moment, um, from, from being hard to feeling like you're walking, walking in outer space. So I'm dreaming in motion, is, it makes me smile. I'm, I'm happy that I was able to write that song. Before I hit the stage, a lot of nerves, uh, a lot of concerns that, um, I'll uh, do something crazy or sound crazy or forget the words. And I forget the words a lot. Mm -hmm. So I change words a lot on stage. Um, you know, so I think there's an empowerment when I get there. Um, after the first note, the first note for me is always shaky just because the nerves are still there. But once, once I hit it, whether it's soft or, 
or boisterous after that first note. It's just, it's almost, uh, I told one of the musicians the other day, it's, it's almost surreal because you are in your own place. Uh, my name is Mark Abrams. Uh, so we specialize in recording, instruction, and artist development. We've been in this facility for two years and the company's been around for six. Uh, Stefan's incredibly talented and he's got a great group of guys with him too, so it's mm -hmm. just a, it's a great project. Uh, this is Vaughn Music Studios. And so how were you introduced to music? My mother. She sing? She sings and plays about four instruments. Sonia Thomas. Oh yeah, I'm Tawan's mother. Yeah, you can say that I um, taught him everything he knows. Yes. Yeah, we all sing or play some sort of instrument, so he definitely came from a musical family in, in all areas, acting, you know, artistic-wise, um, musically, instrumentally. So yeah, he, he definitely came from that sort of family. Um, I think he's been on stage for quite some time. He did a little theater or drama when he was in, what, high school, middle school? So, but he really just started performing solo within the last year. So my family in music, a lot of people, you know, say that their family is in music or, or has some kind of ties, um, so I don't want to sound like that cliche, um, but my mother, she, she, she actually really can sing, um, and when, when I was younger, um, she, she held several gospel concerts, and at one, I um, sang on one, and so I actually have old footage of me at like, I don't know, again, five, between five and eight with an uh, all-black turtleneck, she always had me in a turtleneck, uh, and a black ponytail, she always had me in a ponytail. Um, and so I was petrified, uh, but I sang with her uh, a little bit. She, she kind of stole the show. I, I don't think she really wanted me to sing with her. I think that was kind of for publicity's sake. But <laughs> she let me up there um, and let me kind of croak out a few, a few words. And, um, it, it, was, it was a good time. But she plays um, the flute, the piano, the bass guitar, and, um, the keyboard, and so she she really is um, she really is amazing, and um, she always taught me in life to think outside the box, and uh, she never wanted me to be boxed into any particular uh, culture or sound or anything, um, and you know she never swayed me towards music or anything like that, uh, but in that I was able to um, get involved with you know, contemporary and rock and country. And, you know, I learned about the Bette Midlers and the Julie Garlands and the Frank Sinatras. And, and, and that was a major influence on, on, my, on my sound, um, just listening to them and, and their execution and their, their thoroughness and their flawlessness to an extent. Um, and so I don't think, I, I'm for sure that without her influence, I, I would not even have the sound that I, that I have today. Um, and we always talk about how I stole her voice because when I was born, she dropped several octaves. Um, so it, it's just bizarre. Um, so now when she sings songs that she used to sing, she has to change the keys and stuff and it, it just becomes crazy. And so actually now some songs I can hit that she can't. <laughs> Uh, 
my name is Prince Williams. I'm Ob Bayard. Uh, when he told me he was recording, I just wanted to be present. Yeah, I'm here to support. I'm also his stylist, so I'm here to perfect the image and make sure he's together and doesn't have any wardrobe malfunctions. I've been styling for four years. It's called Bahati and Company. I'm the founder and the CEO. So um, the instrumentalists that play with me, um, they're all phenomenal. I actually just got off the phone with, with one before I came in here. Um, they all do their own thing. Uh, they all are part of something else or have, are creating something else. Um, and the, the, I, I believe that they truly brought this to life uh, beyond any lyric that I could write. Um, and, I, and I say that because I didn't feel that any of them came um, just because of monetary compensation or, or for namesake. Um, they came because they uh, either believed in what they were doing or, or, and or believed in what I was doing. And so I think that that's really evoked uh, in, in the music. And so um, starting with uh, Jeff Bass, um, Jeff Bass, uh, he just cracks me up. He's, he's in his own world. Uh, he plays the upright electric. Um, and I think he plays the flute. And um, he kind of just, he just zones. He just, he does what feels good. Um, and it's just, it's just a wonderful sound and, and a wonderful vibe that he gives when, he, when he's in the studio and, and when he's on stage. Um, you know, he's just him. He's just him, and, he, and, he, and he's alive, and he's alert. And so I, I love that about Jay Bass. Uh, I call him Jay Bass. So um, really appreciate working with Jay. My name's Jeff Bass. We're here uh, at Vaughn Studios today to record for Stefan's upcoming EP. Play the bass, um, bass guitar, and upright bass. Um, I met him earlier this year through Brandon Chapman, the guitar player. Uh, Brent and I have been playing uh, various gigs here and there together and he kind of just called me in to do this project and uh, okay. we um, we kind of met uh, before a show that we had down at Kaifel and we kind of just hit it off then so mm -hmm. I love the music um, it's really soulful uh, definitely extremely original I really like uh, artists who are uh, you know, they want to do their own original material and kind of do their own thing. And it, it, it uh, all music really speaks to me, but especially uh, with R&B and soul. Um, and uh, that last one we did, real like heavy rock influence. I really like those styles. So. Jonathan Baker. Jonathan Baker actually is uh, he's a he's a keyboard player or a piano player or um, keys in general. Um, he's just fantastic. I met Jonathan because I was at a set and he was playing for another artist um, who was who was who was awesome and um, soul. I had made Soul like two nights before we had went there or something like that. And so um, at the end of the set, I, I went ahead and, and just kind of said, you know, here's a new piece that I don't really know how it's going to be, but I'm just going to throw it out there. And as I began to sing, um, JB got on the keys and he ate the song like he wrote the song. And so from that moment, I, I, I was I was like if I, I was I was sure that if I ever had the opportunity to record or do anything else that I would contact him at least for that one piece. And um, JB is just a very humble soul. Um, you wouldn't know the great things that he's done um, unless somebody else has told you because that's just not his style. Um, and so um, Jonathan Baker, look out for him. He, he has his own EP. He has his own projects. Um, very very awesome voice, um, but JV is he's 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 great, and I, th I think that comes off um, on the clips and on the videos. And so, uh, I hope you enjoy him as much as as much as I have thoroughly. Um, definitely a, a great friend, great relationship came out of meeting him. So, I'm J Day with J Day Photography, and I'm basically here to document uh, Stefan's uh, <laughs> event here or his band or whatnot. Um, 
he was like in the owl program with my younger brother so like indirectly for the past like i don't know 12 13 years something crazy like that but we just started working together last year uh, it's um it's needed it's very grown up uh, but not in a bad way um, but i like it i like it Cedric Easton. Cedric Easton, we actually, now this is bizarre because Ced, um, Ced is, is, is well-traveled, um, well-known um, percussionist and uh, very, very um, intense about his craft. But Ced, I knew Ced before he got into Ced. We were actually about four or five when we first met because his family played um, instrumentation for my mother when she was doing gospel concerts <laughs> and so we used to be running around churches acting a fool with his other two brothers um, and just 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 all over the place so it, it, was, it was it was amazing because after that time period we you know got separated and um, you know just just life and so um, chap called set up one day and said you know i didn't know what Seth was going to say because it's intense and so um he kind of agreed to you know to come out and, and when he came he just he brought a force with him um i always call him my my, my creative director um because any lyric that i that i bust out um, he's always going in for the gusto what does it mean and how does it feel and what emotion were you evoking at the time and what emotion do you plan to you know and, and that you know he colors it he definitely colors it and so um he became more than more than just a, a percussionist. He he definitely brought life to uh, lyrics that I thought already had life. Um, so so said is he's just phenomenal, and it. it's, it's just it's great to reunite, um, and it's just crazy to reunite in in this capacity um, back to back to music where we first met. Um, so uh, we just talked about it the other day. It's it's just re it's really <laughs> interesting to to have come back full circle, literally full circle, from his his family and my family to me and him. So um, for that reason, I, I kind of hope we go go a long way. Thanks, drink water. Five K with him, every Willis and God damn it. Gallons. Gallons. So we do it straight gallons. This is straight gallons, that's what we do. Hi. 20 ounces of food. Hi, my name is Cedric Easton. Honestly, I'm here because of Stefan Fanning. I've been knowing him since I was six or something like that so he told me he was doing a project and I told him I was there as much as I could be I love the dude man yeah my parents and his parents actually had a singing group together a gospel singing group back in the day so you know we were playing under the church pews and uh, probably getting a lot of whoopings together so yeah I love the dude I think you came from You got a cloud. You got just to show me your love. So we can experience Ah, one more time. Talk. Brandon Chapman. Brandon Chapman. I heard Brandon Chapman as he was playing with, uh, with, with uh, one of the groups that he actually uh, works closely with. Um, didn't know him at all, and I remember um, going up to him and, and, and telling him how great I thought he was, and then went on about my business, and then I saw him again on his own, at an event doing his own thing, plays the, the lead guitar, um, and I told him, I believe I told him, either there at another event that I wanted to work with him, I hadn't done any music yet. <laughs> it was just like a, a dream, and so um, he didn't he didn't play me off or anything. He said, okay, you know, I'm sure he gets that a lot. 
And so one day I had the opportunity to actually call him because I, I, I had something to do. You know, my, my very first engagement over at the Zanzibar. Um, and he came in and he, and he did it just like I thought he would. And, you know, I didn't know if that was it or if it, if it was over. Um, and then I had the opportunity to do another event. And I had an opportunity to call him, and he, and he came again. And after that, um, I kind of went under Brandon's wing um, because he's definitely more uh, well-versed in the music game. Um, and so, you know, we kind of talked a little bit about about the sound, about what could be and what should happen or what could happen. And um, from there, um, I, me and Brandon kind of worked side, side by side to kind of create what what is dreaming in motion or, or, or what is T1 at this point. Um, and so um, he brings that crazy acoustic sound that I think is very hard to capture, um, no matter the genre. Um, and that, that's what really makes me enjoy working with him is, is no matter what genre I want to um, highlight in the, in the music, he's there, either before me or, or with me. Um, and he has no problem telling me that it sounds ridiculous too, so um, that goes with all the fellows. So um, it's, Brandon started from literally a complete stranger to, um, I would consider one of, one of my greatest friends and uh, a strong, strong forerunner for this project. And um, I'm very grateful to Brandon for, uh, for having faith in me. and, and uh, pushing and pulling the team together um, the way that he has from from engineers to studios to to the instrumentalists that we're working with today so um, that's chat my name is Brandon Chapman uh, I'm the MD for the Stefan EP and uh, I, when I first met Stefan we were at Miss Ina's and I was getting my barbecue jerk chicken on and uh, he was like, hey man, I really would like to work with you. And I said, yeah man, uh, that sounds cool, that sounds cool, that sounds fine. And I got his number and then, you know, we linked up and did a couple gigs together. And I was like, all right man, well this can really go somewhere. So then uh, we started writing together and everything like that. And it uh, just kind of evolved into this. And it's, it was a beautiful surprise it, it's it's amazing I've been doing music for the last past uh, 12 years now okay. professionally so it's been uh, it's been quite the journey highs and lows good times and bad but uh, you know I can't uh, I'm very thankful I'm very thankful for everything that I've had so my music um, is very simple uh, I just want it to be a mirror I, I want it to be a mirror that people can reflect from so I don't really tell stories necessarily, but I give the framework for the story. Um, so you won't hear too much about direct things, but you'll hear about emotions and about the roundabout. Um, and that's so that the listener or the spectator can impart their own life journey into that moment, or they can feel their own moment in that music, uh, rather than me forcing them into a certain section. So. Um, that's how I want my music to be perceived.